when the UN when the UN declared a final warning and called for everyone to do everything all the time, the government responded with business as usual. Partygate, Brexit, strikes and protests, even funding the development of a nuclear power plants on the moon. And Evan Davis on Radio 4PM managed to make climate change sound quite cosy all under control. No intimation of tipping points to irreversible global heating or ecological collapse. No urgency. It is normal to expect leaders to make decisions and know best. But when mistaken policies threaten our existence and have led to gross inequality, punitive benefits, homelessness, failed services, poverty, market failure, a disregard for human rights. We cannot be fooled any longer. When nothing works and protests are ignored, we must act now. It is our duty. We are the only hope. The good news is that the public has the answers. The grassroots have been active with countless local initiatives of all sorts across the country to make life better and cut carbon. All that work needs to be brought together as formal policy, along with the recommendations in several independent reports ignored by government, even when commissioned by them. Civil society as a whole, that is the public and all the experts has the answers. General solutions have been widely known for decades. We are the majority. We do the work. Those on the ground are best placed to know the problems and possibilities. And the public are way ahead of government in realizing the urgency. We also have the good example of DM25, a grassroots movement in Europe, which has used countless local informal conversations to build policy since 2016. Their Green New Deal for Europe could provide a useful framework for policies here. We know we have to totally change our way of life and systems if we are to survive. There will be plenty to do, but many of today's jobs and successful businesses will have to go. It will not be easy. We can expect howls of protest from powerful organizations, mythical silver bullets and misinformation. We must not be deterred from an accurate assessment of the situation and the tools we have now to mend things. We will need widespread conversations from all points of view and the generous spirit of cooperation to build consensus for the fairest, quickest, safest way to transition and how to support people through the changes. We are in such a hole, we will need all the knowledge of all the public to work out a range of different solutions for different areas and circumstances. Government has stopped listening to so many people, it does not even have enough information to make sane policy. Only the grassroots can do this. We're starting with farming and food, but are well aware that all aspects of life and policy need to be tackled to produce a people's manifesto. Today is just the start. We'll need a whole series of talks to cover the host of topics associated with farming, food and wildlife. Different systems in growing and distribution, pollution, plastics, waste, packaging, food sovereignty here and globally, unhealthy food, workers' rights, etc., etc. Your views and priorities and, and knowledge will be essential. I became convinced that the grassroots had the answer 
after writing a book about the way capitalism had undermined democracy, which I finished in lockdown. I was heartened to learn that many across Europe were ahead of me and had shared this view since 2016. I'm extremely grateful for the support of the Citizen Network and the many speakers who've agreed to join us. And I want to thank you for being a part of this transition by joining this evening. Working on solutions with others is a healing process. We will all end up much better informed, empowered, and able to respect our own views and knowledge and equally those of others. That's it.